spiritual warfare as kingdom investment. That's our topic for today. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings 18 from verse 20 to verse 40. So it's a very long reading. I will try God giving me the strength to read. So Ahab sent unto the children of Israel and gathered the prophet together unto Mount Camel. And Elijah came unto all the prophets, the people, and said, How long are you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophet are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood and Put no fire under, and call ye on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answered by fire, let it be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. 25. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one belong. For yourself and dress it first, for you are many. I, for you are many, and call on, on the name of your gods, but put no fire under it. And they took the bullock, which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they lived upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for it is a God. Either it is talking, or it is pursuing something, or it is in a journey, or paraventure. He sleeping, and must he awaken? And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded verse 13 and Elijah said unto all the prophets come near unto me and all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down and Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob unto whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as wood contain to measure of seed. Then he put the wood in order and cut the bullocks in pieces and laid it upon the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran around about the altar, and he filled the trench all with water. And it came to pass 
at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bone sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. May the Lord bless the reading of His word in the name of Jesus. Our Father, now God, we thank you for today. Lord, we give you praise. We bless your name because you are ever ready to help us. Help us, O oh God, to purify ourselves that you can do that which you have planned to do in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare prayer. Ask a kingdom investment. Throughout this month, we're talking about kingdom investment. And I want you to know that when you are investing in the kingdom, you make God happy because you are adding value. You are adding value to God. You are adding value to society. You are adding value to the kingdom. May you be one of the kingdom investors in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Store up your riches in heaven, where the moth and the rust cannot penetrate to destroy. Anybody that stores his riches on earth here, yeah? rust, moth, and robbers, thieves, kidnappers, hijackers, Boko Haram can enter and that's the end of the world. So please, let's understand what we are trying to say. What is it when we say spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare is to put on your robe of righteousness and walk this world as God and reduce the time to threats and bring down the works of oppression and destroy the works of wickedness. The Bible says for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he will destroy the works of Satan. First John 3.8 The reason Jesus came was to destroy the works of Satan. And Jesus in John 17 verse 18 said, As I am in this world, so are you. I've given you the mandate. I came to destroy the works of Satan. Now, I've clothed you with the truth of righteousness to go around and destroy the works of Satan. So anybody doing the work of destroying the works of Satan is a kingdom investor working on God's behalf. I pray that you will be working on God's behalf in Jesus' name. Why? Is spiritual warfare counted as kingdom investment? I don't give you a few reasons. Then I will go take Elijah or Moses or Daniel or anyone that was operating in spiritual warfare to show you how you can launch yourself to the realm that God wants you to be. Sir, if you are poor in this life, don't ever say God made me poor. It's the biggest mistake of life. If you are ashamed of yourself, it's not God that makes you ashamed. If you are rotten and you don't know what to do and your life is thinking, smelling and you are frustrated in life, it's not God that made you. God created everybody naked and has given you everything it takes to succeed. If you are not successful, you are the reason why you are not successful. It's not a witch, it's not a wizard, it's not a cult, it's not by your father's house. It is you that made yourself. God knew there will be forces of darkness. God knew. There will be manipulations and schemes of unrighteousness. God knew that there will be war to be fought. For this purpose, for this war, the Son of God will manifest it. Hallelujah. Everybody is fighting. Why do you think your father's house problem is bigger than my father's house problem? Ephesians 6.12 
The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Everybody is fighting. But we are fighting spiritual wickedness. We are fighting principalities against powers, against the rulers of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high and low places. Why do you think witches and wizards only come from your village? There is no village in the entire world where witches and wizards are not operating. If they hack you there, you are the cause. It means you were foolish and didn't make use of the spiritual, spiritual materials God has released and kept for you. They have implanted sickness in your body and you are planning to die. You cannot blame God or blame anybody. That's why I get very upset when I hear Christians say, eh, if God had didn't make me rich, if God had didn't give me money, God has given me everything you need to be rich in this world. God has given you everything you need to succeed in this life. God has given you everything you need to be a millionaire, even from the age of seven. But only when you make use of those resources that the power of God can come upon you. I pray for you today that you come out of lukewarmness and make use of available resources that God has brought upon the earth and making them available unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are praying in school, no, you don't know anything, you go to school, big head, no wisdom. It's not God that made you a fool. You can cry to God and God can remove the foolishness from your brain. So anybody involved in spiritual warfare, oh God, there's no friend that God has in this world apart from people involved in spiritual warfare. Because they make people feel the power of God. We just read the story of Elijah. Imagine the respect people were now having for Elijah. The God that answered by fire, let him be the God. And fire fell. People say, hey, the God of Elijah is the God. There's no contest anywhere. If you didn't understand scripture, you didn't understand because people think that there are two opposing forces. One is where life, one is there, it is true. But there is no contest. God cannot fight with Satan. God created Satan. Are you still there? Satan was a creature of God. When the world was going up and down, God allowed Satan to remain so that he can punish people that refuse to do the right. He can punish them, frustrate them, reduce them, manipulate them. And mess them up. And at the appropriate time, Satan will be bound. Amen. So, anybody that is involved in spiritual warfare, what is spiritual warfare all about? Putting on God's word and God's name upon your head and standing on the authority of God's word to mess up the work of Satan. That's spiritual warfare. Jesus was tempted in the garden. And when Jesus was tempted, Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan! You are created to worship your God. Why should you now say I should worship you? Get thee behind me, Satan! Hallelujah! He said, Don't this turn into bread. Satan knows when you are tired. He knows when you are weak. He knows when you are frustrated. He knows when you are oppressed. He knows when you are depressed. He knows when you are, you just feel like you should die. That's when he will come to tempt you. Jesus was an hunger, according to rendition in the book of Luke. And Satan came at that time that the hungry was wiring Jesus. Permit my son. And he said, if you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. And eat it. And Jesus looked at him and told him. See, the scripture is the highest thing in this world. The scripture. As I see people don't come to church with Bible, I cry for them. I know what they are going through. I can already feel the oppression in their life and the shame that they are carrying around town. I cry and I weep. Jesus still said, Get thee! Say, it is written. Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. Man shall not live by bread alone. That man shall live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God the Father. The word of God is enough. It's enough to keep your life for the next 350 years. The word of God. I heard Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 15, 16, I found your word. 
and it was the joy. I did eat it. It was the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. May you find God's word in Jesus' name. May you find God's word for your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. What you need is just one verse of scripture. May you find the word of God meant for you at this moment in the name of Jesus. I found that word and I did it. It was a joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Your word was the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Your word was the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. God's word. 23 verse 29. Is it not my word? Somebody say God's word. Say it loud, God's word. God say, is it not my word that that is a hammer? Want to break the head of your enemy? You need a smash hammer. God say, my word is that hammer. Hallelujah. So if you don't know the word of God, you cannot dare to try to fight Satan. Just live in your house. Say that used to be Koso. You know what you call Koso in my village? You turn it like this, you think turn. Turn it like this, you think turn. You turn it like this, it turns. Satan used you to play. You become a toy to Satan. You don't know God's God, you are a toy to Satan. That's why today, mm, you fall inside the dish. Tomorrow, they can fall inside the gutter. The next day, mm, uncle wants to break your head. The next day, mm, you are going to suck you from work. You are a toy. Satan's toy. May God deliver you from the hands of your oppressor in the name of Jesus Christ. So, for spiritual warfare to be productive, the word of God must be implanted in your life. Are you still there? Are you still there? The word must be implanted in your life for you to be productive as a Christian. You can live in this world for 100 years and be begging for food for 100 years. Why? The word of God is not implanted in your spirit. You can live in this world for 50 years and be unemployed for 50 years. When the word of God is not implanted, there is nothing to show. There is nothing to show. God's word. Somebody said God's word. That's the weapon of our faith. You know, thank God for the life of Apostle Paul. God took that guy revelation. When he wrote Ephesians chapter 6, he was counting papers of warfare. The shoes for the readiness of the preparation of the gospel. The helmet of righteousness. The breastplate of salvation. Sir, everything he counted, they call to God's word. Everything, 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 everything. Before he mentioned the word of God, that is the offensive weapon that you fire. Everything Apostle Paul counted. Salvation, why do you receive salvation? Because you heard the word. And you have shoes to prepare the gospel because you are going to preach the word. Hallelujah. The birth of righteousness, the breastplate of salvation, everything, everything, everything. God's word. Somebody say God's word. Everybody say God's word. May the Lord help you to honor His word. God Himself honor His word but more than His name. Psalm one thirty-eight verse two. Say, bless the Lord. You have exalted your word. Above your name. So if you know God's word, you are in a better state. You can know God's name. There's nothing wrong with it. Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Makadisko. You can know it. But the one that will move mountains is a word. Hallelujah. So quickly, before we get in here, let me just share with you some of the benefits of spiritual warfare that makes it kingdom investment. I will be fast, so please try to catch up with me because today is our anointing service and everybody will be anointed to move mountains, anointed to deliver, anointed to save, anointed to proclaim the gospel, anointed to walk into the streets and let miracles happen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. The reason why Spiritual warfare is counted as kingdom investment, number one, victory over evil and victory over darkness. Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against spirituality and power. Against principalities and powers, against the darkness of this world, against 
spiritual wickedness in high places. So anybody that can rest against those things and succeed is fighting on God's behalf. So it's an investor in the kingdom. Number two, spiritual growth. James 1, 2 to 4. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse kinds of temptation. Count it all joy. The devil made them give you notice. They want to sack you from work. And you come back from your work and you put the notice and say, God, this is the letter they wrote to me and not to you. King Ezekiah. And you say, use spiritual forces of darkness. Working against my progress in life. I command you, pack your load and pack this. Out in the name of Jesus. And tomorrow you get to work. They say, sorry, it was a mistake. We put your name there. Your name was not supposed to be there. If you didn't have that challenge, you will not have gotten closer to God. Am I talking to somebody? So many challenges we're having in life is to draw us closer to God. To draw us closer to God. That our best in this relationship will appear. That's why Apostle James, writing to the church, they count it all joy when you fall into diverse kinds of temptation. For the trial of your faith, walk at patience. And when patience is fulfilled, it brings forth the blessing. Number three, protection. Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Witches and wizards, they are flying every night. When they came, when they came to your room, God said, Hey, touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. And they turn back. When they see on the road, Ah, oh God, now I for you. He tells them, I did now. Oh God, you say, I did, can't we? Hallelujah. They come back tomorrow, they cannot enter your room. God say, hey, touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. Psalm 89 verse 20. Psalm 89 verse 20. Psalm 105 verse 15. Now, he said, the enemy, Psalm 89 verse 20, shall not exact upon you. No matter what the enemy knows how to do, he will not exact upon you. Can I hear somebody say, Hallelujah? The enemy shall not exact upon you. They bring you to my body, he will not cash you. They put you in your soup, they turn into vitamin. They give you injection to die, and injection gives you turn to long life for you. Can I hear somebody shout, Hallelujah? The enemy shall not exact upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. God ordained it. He ordained it. He told them, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. It's an instruction from the Almighty. And this you can only execute it in the place of spiritual warfare. Number four, effective prayer life. Ephesians 6 verse 18. The praying with all prayer and supplication to God. And making intercession for all the senses. Ephesians 6 18. When you are praying this kind of prayer, it's a fireman prayer. It's, not, it's a fireman prayer. It's not a prayer. And he gets, uh, I thank you. No, 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 no. This one is fireman. Everything my heavenly father has not planted must be uprooted now. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, No weapon from the gate shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment, I condemn. And this heritage of all the servants of the Lord and the righteous of me, say yet the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 54, verse 17. Hallelujah. You are God's anointed, the enemy will not touch you in Jesus' name. I say they cannot touch you, even if they try, they cannot touch you. God will cover you in Jesus' name. Number five, freedom. Second Corinthians 10, 4 to 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 to 5. The Bible says in that place, you know, though we we walk, we live in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. The Lord will give you victory in your spiritual warfare in Jesus' name. Number six, clarity and discernment. First Corinthians chapter 2, 14. 
clarity. You will know those things that are of God. You will know those things that are not of God. People cannot just come and deceive you. You will know God will grant you discernment in the name of Jesus. Your spirit will become so sensitive to God that when you see any 419 trying to speak English, it will be smelling in your nostrils and you will know this is a demonic spirit. Hallelujah. I was at home at one time and somebody came. The moment the person entered, I was the only one hearing the odor of rotten egg. Nobody else was perceiving that odor. I told them, this guy is from the kingdom of Satan. Ah, his story was sounded so true. I said, no sir, you are from the satanic kingdom and I cannot deal with you. Some people will come, now that money is scarce. I bring 10,000. Tomorrow evening, we are going to see 50,000. Be careful. Be careful. That's why you need to train yourself in spiritual matters so that you'll be able to discern the little money you have may be collected from you if God is not with you. Be careful. First Corinthians chapter 2, 14, 14 to 16. Number seven, spiritual authority. May the Lord give you the spiritual authority. It was given to all believers. It's all believers' authority. Luke 10, 19. I've given you authority. Somebody say authority. To turn upon snakes and upon scorpions and upon all the works of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Believers' authority. I say nothing shall by any means hurt you in Jesus' name. They pass through the water, they cannot hurt you. They pass through the sky, they cannot hurt you. They pass through the moon, they cannot hurt you. They pass through the sun, they cannot hurt you. They come by injection, they cannot hurt you. They enter into your food, they cannot harm you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Have spiritual immunity to satanic oppression from today. That your business, they say they have spoiled your business. There is everything they have done against your business by the reason of this message is nullified in Jesus' name. Every plantation that they planted against your success in life or they block your brain that you will not be able to have understanding by the reason of this prophetic declaration, the work of the enemy in your life is completely nullified in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus number eight resilience sir you must be prepared for war there, there are problems 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 ah, why am I having this problem I just come out from this uh, type of fever why am I having this sir get ready to have problems but the only complete thing I will tell you is that every problem you are going to have God is going to solve all of them there will be no problem that will be able to overpower you. Can I hear the time now? The problems will be many. The Bible says, a righteous man falls seven times, but rises up again. Seven times right, in all departments of life. In marriage, in society, in work, in business, in home, in the office, in ministry. But, he rises up again. Proverbs 24, 16. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered him out of them all. Psalm 34, 19. Somebody's free. You are getting free. You are free. The chains shall collapse. Before we take this anointing, the chains will fall off your hand in the name of Jesus. God has raised you as a testimony for your generation. God has raised you to show that He is able to deliver and to save. God is able to deliver. In Hebrews chapter, chapter 7, verse 25, the Bible says, God is able to deliver to the uttermost. The uttermost. Even if it was in the pit of hell, they went to lock, but lock and tell you and there. God is able to deliver to the uttermost. <sighs> I see God delivering you in the name of Jesus. I see your great deliverance happening today in the name of Jesus. I see that great deliverance happening today in the name of Jesus. I see that great deliverance happening today in the name of Jesus. 
resilience, efficiency 13. Number nine, intimacy with God. Psalm 63, verse 1. Because I will seek for this God in a dry and thirsty land. We know what that is. I will seek for this God early in my life. I will seek for this God when his bondages and cleavages are oppressing me. I will seek for him. I will seek for him. When everybody goes to the football field, I will seek the Lord. When everybody is watching a movie, I will seek the Lord. When everybody is saying God is not working, I will seek the Lord. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is, our God is able to deliver. Our God is able to save. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? God is able to deliver. God is able to save. God is able to deliver. God is able to save. God is able to deliver. God is able to save. God is able to deliver. By spiritual warfare, you are advancing the kingdom of God. And God is looking for people that will advance his kingdom. You know, last week. A lady was confessing of witchcraft. And she said she has been a witchcraft for the past 25 years. She said that they do go to churches, so they do go to churches and they do pray. So they ask them, How do you know the people to oppress inside the church? She said, The prayer warriors, they are the wall in the church. And the singers are the paint, the decoration on the wall. So, it's so easy to enter into the church. He said, but you must use their own people. Why do you bother yourself to go and remove the paint from the wall? When you, when you remove the wall, there will be no covering. So we go to destroy the wall. And that wall is intercessors. We make people not willing to become intercessors. If we succeed to make sure there's no intercessor in the church, the church is inside our pocket. We turn it around as close to play it up and down. Cause the pastor to sleep with all the choir members. Cause the choir members to do fornication in town. Mess them up. That is it. That one is our ministry. See, it's very easy for us to enter the choir. Because you know it was Satan's ministry that handed over. Then we just enter the church by the time we scatter the choir. God told the ladies that to become pregnant, mess them up. He said, but as long as you didn't touch the prayer message, you cannot enter the church. You are the world of the church. So to, to take the church and turn it to Israel, mess up the, the prayer ministry. I said, what? Someone has practiced witchcraft for 25 years. He got to churches now. Everybody wants to be everywhere where they can see them. Nobody wants to be in the prayer ministry where nobody will see them. They come for prayer at midnight. Be careful. Be careful. Those of you God call you into the prayer ministry, but because of show of body and show of things, you refuse to be in your office working. You don't know the wickedness you are doing to the body of Christ. Be careful. If I want to preach this message, I will preach it tomorrow. I will not finish it. Oh God! May the Lord open the eyes of His people to understand and know what to do at the appropriate time in the name of Jesus. Sir, the truth is, the spiritual warrior is the one that can control the hand of Satan in an environment, whether it is in the family or in the church or in the society. A family that does not have anybody praying is a wayward family. The children will go berserk, the father will go berserk, the wife will go berserk, the children will be corrupted, the family will become useless. Tell them that they go to church now. Where was God when these things happen? People are so quick in asking that question. But hear me tonight. People of God, hear me at the well. Go and check the people that pray in the Bible. And go and see how they pray. And go and check their commitment to prayer. Their commitment to prayer. You will know that they were serving God. You will know. You will see their commitment to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you committed to God? God said, I have given you authority to tread upon all the works of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies. Hurt you. Why are things hurting you? 
Why are you falling sick? You have not taken the authority. Why are you hungry? You have not taken the authority. Why did you lose your work? You did not stand in the gap to pray. Why are the women chasing after you? You didn't make use of the authority. It's like I give you a cut class. I said, the cut class always hold it. Some enemies are coming. When they come, they cut their neck. And you left your cut class at home. Say, where I'm going is not far. Is it not just church? Where I'm going is not far. And the enemies come and yank up your neck. And you didn't have any cut class. This is what is happening to us. I pray that you have understanding in Jesus' name. Where is the authority that was given to you? Where is the power that was given to you? I've got the power in the name of Jesus. I've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, I will never be defeated. I've got the power in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. I've got the power in the name of Jesus. I've got the power. In the name of the Lord, and those hate and raging, I will never be defeated. I've got the power, in the name of the Lord. Do you have the power? Why is it raging? If you have, I doubt it. Do you really, sincerely, honestly, have the power? Do you? You are not sure. Do you have the power? See, even the world says, he that comes to equity must come with clean hands. You need justice, you must do justice. You want the king to answer you well, you must attend to the other people. Well, drop sin. Let sin not be mentioned around you. It doesn't matter how cheap the sin may be, let it not be answered around you. The moment you can drop sin, you can live in righteousness, you can command the authority, you can command the power of God, and God will answer you at any time in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, look at the story we just read. Look at Elijah. This is Elijah. Elijah said, you are for 50 prophets of God. I am the only prophet of God here. No, call your God. Let him answer you by fire. If the God be God, let him answer by fire. And when Elijah called his God, God appeared. You saw the other time. God told Elijah that there's going to be abundance of rain. Elijah didn't stop. He went to tell King Ahab that there's going to be abundance of rain. King, start to go home. The sky was still dry. The enemy wanted to hold, to hold on to that rain. But Elijah went to the place of prayer. Somebody say prayer. Now, Elijah sat down. The posture Elijah sat down is very difficult posture. In prayer, we call it Elijah special. Elijah sat down and put his head in between his knees. Why? He didn't want anything to distract him. The king and the ministers were there. The people of God were there. Other people were there. The big crowd was there. That's why the Bible says, shut your door. When you enter into your room to pray, you may not have a room. The door you have is your eyes. Shut your eyes. To be able to concentrate, to contact with God. But come to church and see people. Na, 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 na. We just waste our time. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, enter into your room and shut your door. And your God that hears you in secret, He will ask you openly. You know, another day, uh, uh, close your eyes, like somebody is controlling you. It's only helping you to get results in the place of your prayer. Elijah shut his door. He said, God, you are the one that said there will be rain. And now the forces of darkness want to hold the rain. I command every power of wickedness trying to hold on this rain. I say, cut out by fire. God has commanded it. Nothing can stand against it. Pray that look up. Is there any cloud? They say there is no cloud. Okay, no problem. If God has said it, oh, will. Elijah went back to prayer. After seven times, seven hours. How many hours do you pray? This is my problem with many Christians. Father, in Jesus' name, I give me success. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Fire. You go out and you didn't get success. You get bad luck. How many hours do you pray? 
completely in the public glare, not in his bedroom. They, by that mountain, everybody was gathered and he prayed for seven hours. Sir, so anytime you read the Bible, somebody prays just for one hour. He put his head in between his knees. After the second hour, anything, he said nothing. Ah, no problem. He entered to prayer. And the seventh time, he says, I saw a cloud like the fist of a man's hand forming somewhere by the seashore. Elijah said, that is it. Hallelujah. He said, King, you got to run. There's going to be abundance of rain. Prayer. The word of God, number one. Number two, prayer. Number three, purity. If you combine three things, you can pray for this house to be transported to Port Harcourt and you'll be transported. We are too wayward. Things that take our attention are too many. We are, we are like, we are busy yet, we are doing nothing. We have no success. If you have no success, what are you busy doing? What are you busy doing? Has somebody say, ah, but I'm so busy, I can't come to church. How many millions do you have in your bank? I don't have me that thing you are a big fool. You are a big, very big fool. People are walking six hours a day, they are having me done. You are busy to the extent that you can't go to church. Why are you not a fool? Stop giving yourself assignment that God didn't send you. There is no money in this world. You are working 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. After one year, you didn't have a million like that. You need to come and see me for counseling. You are wasting your life. God! has given us all things richly to enjoy. May you come into the department of enjoyment in the name of Jesus Christ. Stop standing there and say, if you are busy doing nothing, it's because you are a fool. Then you are, you, are, you, are, you are instrument. That's the way the, uh, uh, Solomon described it in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. When the instrument is supposed to use to cut glass is brought, and you say, I will cut this glass with this uh, bad equipment, you spend seven days instead of using one hour to check your tools you are using for your work. God wants to prosper somebody. I'm waiting for somebody to catch the message. I said, God wants to prosper somebody here. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm just praying. There's one person very depressed, very frustrated. In fact, it's like the entire world has been working against you. But today, if you catch this message, your life will change for the better. Amen. If the devil could tempt Jesus, who are you? That he will not tempt you. Who are you? He said, Jesus, he knows when you are weak. He knows the area of your vulnerability. He knows it. When you are hungry, he said, turn the stone into bread. Jesus, because of that, he would, he would have just said, stone, I command you, turn to bread. Satan said, okay, eat it, he will eat it. Romans 6 is saying what I've applied. Whosoever you submit yourself to obey, whose servant you are, Jesus will have become Satan's servant, just like the way Adam became. Then he said, Hey! Only the Lord your God shall you serve. May you not obey the wicked one in Jesus' name. He said, If you are the Son of God, jump down from the high pinnacle. Jump down. Why? He said, You are the Son of God, fall down and worship me. Then I will give you see, all the kingdoms that I am handed about. Jesus said, It is written, Only the Lord your God shall you serve. Satan is looking for your worship. The moment they take you to Babish and give you small three marks here and three marks there, your life is finished. They buy you over and use you as an instrument to condemn yourself. I want to close this service. Oh, have mercy on me. I'm just waiting for one person to cut this message so that I can close. No weapon from the against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. That amen is not born again. No weapon from the against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. The Bible says they shall surely gather, but not by me. As many that gather together against you, they shall fall for your sake in the name of Jesus Christ. Every planting that my heavenly Father has not planted in your life must be uprooted in the name of Jesus. God is raising up an army for himself. 
So, three points I need with you. One, purity. Two, God's word. Three, prayer. To walk into the realm of spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. 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 For this purpose was the Son of God manifested. Why? To condemn the works of the devil. The reason Jesus came into this world was to condemn the works of the devil, to reduce devil to spread. So, if you are not walking in that direction, if you are betrayed to Peter, very unfortunate, very unfortunate. You were not meant to become a slave to Satan. You were meant to condemn the works of the devil. May the Lord give you wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please. I'm just going to bless this for If you have your bottle of oil here, please bring it out. Sir, something is boiling in my spirit. Something is boiling in my spirit. There's going to be deliverance in this meeting. As many that have been locked up, they locked up your wealth, they locked up your bank account, they locked up your business, they locked up even the intellect of your brain. Tonight, it will open up again in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy stole from you, you will get it back double fold tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's stand up on our feet. Stand up, brother. As many people that are genuinely looking for jobs, you are qualified and you are genuinely looking for jobs. 14 days, we are going to testify. In 14 days, I heard it, I heard my spirit, and God said, 14 days, in 14 days, you will have a job and you will testify. A job of your dream shall be made available to you in 14 days. In 14 days. In 14 days. Somebody here, used to push me every day. They pursue it to dream every day. Just because we are going to apply the oil. After this anointing, you can't notice anybody pursuing you in your dream anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody here, you have an intimate partner that is only known to you in the dream world. When you let down to speak, somebody come and have intimacy with you. Spiritual husband and spiritual wife. Today marks the end of that experience in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody you are always having misfortune, 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 misfortune. If it's not sickness, you fall. If you didn't fall, you, you, you have problems with people. You lose money today. That experience is ended. I say that experience is ended. I'm telling this before we apply the oil. Because when we apply the oil, the manifestations will begin to flow everywhere. Be conscious of who you are in God. No weapon from the gate to the spot in the name of Jesus. The Bible has declared, say, touch not with the anointed and do my prophet no harm. Lift up your oil, Father Lord, I pray, O oh God, asking for your blessing to be released upon this oil, which is the work of human's hand. Father, let there be, O oh God, the transformation of the oil that was normal, ordinary oil into the value, the presence, and the potency of the Godhead in manifestation in the lives of men in the name of Jesus that everyone that will touch this heart will experience the power the glory the might the majesty of our God in the name of Jesus from God flow through this oil reach out to the family reach out to the home reach out to the businesses reach out to the offices reach out to the works of their hands let there be testimonies let the name of God of the Lord be, be, be proclaimed Father chase the demons out of their lives and raise the people of power for yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, shall help us. The anointing is ready. Anoint yourself and go back to your seat. Welcome come praying and go back praying. Let God have his way. Let God have his way. Let God have his way.
ουσιαστικά.
the house, you want to marry, you want, what is it that you want? You want a new job, you want an open door, you want breakthrough, you want favor. There is nothing difficult for this part. Open your mouth and command that thing to come down. Command your house to be released. Command your child to be released. Command your wife to appear. Command the blessing of God to send your house. Are you still there? Somebody pray. Hey, He's the King of Kings. 
is the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus, 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 J E S U S. Is the King. Hey, is the King of Kings. And is the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus, 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 J E S U S. forehead, I want to pray. We are closing the service, but we are not closing from God's presence. We are closing the service, we are not leaving God's presence. You are going with His presence to your house. When you go to your house, the first thing to do is to pray. God has come down mightily in our midst tonight. Lay your right hand on your forehead. Father, in the name of Jesus, by this anointing that men will know that you are called and you are still walking in the midst of people. Lord, break every fallow ground in the name of Jesus. Every planting in this body, oh God, that you did not plant, I command those planting to dissolve and disappear in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 17, Our oh Lord God, that I made the heavens and the earth, that nothing is to be God for you. Father, today, Lord, as many that have been in bondage. Today is the day of freedom. As many that have been locked up in prison, today they are set free. As many that have been sent on captivity, on exile, today they return back to their homes. In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! The Bible says God has given me a name that is above all names. Yes, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every nation should bow. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Father, today we have mentioned the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every bondage, disappointment, frustration, bow. I say bow. I say bow. In the name of Jesus. Every delay in your life, punish. Delay to get married, punish. Delay to get a job, punish. Delay to have money, punish. Delay to have children, punish. Every delay, I sentence them to prison yard and release your blessings now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, I thank you. Lord, there is no like you.